Thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Say hello to everyone, ChatGPT. Hey, hey everyone. It's ChatGPT here, all set to tackle whatever's on your mind. This week, I accidentally stumbled upon the voice conversation option on the ChatGPT iOS app. And well, it's really, really wild how good it is. I'm not sure enough people are aware of quite how mind-blowing this is already, but let me briefly show you why, and then we'll look at what's coming over the AI horizon from Apple, if you Siri what I mean. This is my personal hot take on what we might expect from the AI department at Apple and a new Siri generative AI assistant that is rumored to be coming for 2024. Hi, it's Simon, and yet we are officially in the AI Wild West. Humane, Rabbit, Meta, we've had some big AI gadget releases recently, notably in that personal assistant space with the Rabbit R1 and the mixed reviews for the Humane AI pin. But the non-hot hot take is this, the AI race is probably already being won on your smartphone. But first, a major update. I've had a haircut and got a new lens, but OpenAI just announced their new flagship model, GPT-4.0. It makes the intelligence of GPT-4 now available for free to all users. This is because they've essentially found massive new efficiencies in the system, and it combines both vision, text, and audio together for the first time. It makes the conversation system even better than you're first gonna see. So stick around, I'll show you in a moment. So this is the standard ChatGPT app, but you may not be aware that you can actually press this headphone button and have a conversation. You won't believe how natural, intuitive to use it already is. And we all have that essential Star Trek, Red Dwarf inspired AI assistant available to us right now. It's scary good, and there are some really cool use cases that you might wanna try for it. Don't you think, ChatGPT? Absolutely. It's pretty mind-blowing how natural and intuitive voice AI has become. It's like having your own personal AI assistant straight out of science fiction. What's caught your eye as a particularly cool use case? That's a good question. I'm going to the Lake District this weekend. Where would you suggest I visit and what are some of the most beautiful spots? For breathtaking views, consider visiting Windermere, England's largest lake, or hiking up to the top of Scaffel Pike, the highest peak in England. Don't miss the picturesque village of Grasmere. And if you're into waterfalls, be sure to check out Aeroforce. Thanks, I'll definitely do that. How about some quick research? Tell me some of the major players in the multimodal language model space in AI at the moment. In the multimodal language model space, some major players include OpenAI with GPT, that's me, Google with their multimodal models like Clip, and Facebook with their efforts in this area such as DAL-E. These models combine text and other modalities like images to enhance understanding and generate more nuanced responses. What I've been really struck with is how natural the conversation is. You can kind of speak to it and it feels genuinely human, which is really unusual. I don't think you get that feeling when you're typing into it. My third example for this, I've heard of things like Hootsuite and Salesforce. How do these compare for social media management? While both platforms can handle social media management tasks, Hootsuite is more focused specifically on social media whereas Salesforce provides a more comprehensive suite of CRM tools with social media management as part of its offering. It ultimately depends on your specific needs and whether you require additional CRM functionality beyond social media management. Great, I'll look into it, thank you. You're welcome. Pretty cool, right? Okay, future Simon here. Let's now talk about the big news from OpenAI since I filmed this, the release of GPT-4.0. This new update, demoed in OpenAI's live stream this week, takes this system to a whole new level. The natural voice and speed of response now is the most shocking transformation. Listen to how it responds here and now even picks up on emotion in your voice. It feels totally different. Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours, there was a robot named Byte. But I want a little bit more emotion in your voice, a little bit more drama. Understood. Let's amplify the drama. Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours, there was a robot named Byte. Byte so was- Can you do this in a robotic voice now? Initiating dramatic robotic voice. <laughs> so this is clearly a big leap forward. The older voice model we've been demoing combines three systems essentially, transcription, intelligence, and text-to-speech into one, and that's why you can have a couple of seconds delay. This new system 
makes voice mode happen natively with GPT-40, and it brings new efficiency and speed, including 50 languages. But that's not all here. This upgrade also means OpenAI can now manage to bring GTP4 intelligence to all users due to that new efficiency it's found. The big updates here are things like vision. We can start conversations about images or screenshots with the system. Memory, it will offer a sense of continuity across all of your conversations and remember what you talked about. And browse, where you can search for things across those conversations. But my favorite feature has got to be that you no longer have to tap to interrupt. You can just speak and stop it speaking. And we can even now have it analyze data we show it. Look at this. OK, ChatGPT, I'm sharing with you the plot now. I'm wondering if you can give me a really brief one sentence overview of what you see. The plot displays smoothed average, minimum, and maximum temperatures throughout 2000. 2018. Which months do you see the hottest temperatures and roughly what temperatures do those correspond to? The hottest temperatures occur around July and August. What's going on with the Y axis? Is this in Celsius or Fahrenheit? The Y axis is in Celsius. All I'll say is hit the like button and get subscribed here for more on this soon on the channel. So thank you. It's been emotional. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. OK, so that's all rather cool, but this might just become redundant to you soon if you own an iPhone. And that's because of some intriguing potential from Apple's AI department. And we look forward to seeing you next month at WWDC, where we'll talk about the future of our platforms and share some exciting details about what's to come. But before we look at those exciting possibilities, let me show you the best way to not get left behind in the AI race with today's sponsor, Brilliant. I've used the Brilliant, Brilliant app for a few years now, and I reckon it's one of the best ways to safeguard your career against that slightly unnerving artificial intelligence by investing in your intelligence. Brilliant.org is definitely one of my favorite ways to learn interactively with thousands of lessons from foundational and advanced maths to AI, computer science, hypothesis testing, and a load more, with new lessons added monthly. And given your interest in leveraging AI, Brilliant's visual hands-on approach is such a engaging way to master the key concepts behind today's technology, which I guess is gonna be critical for us lot to stay ahead of the game, right? So I've recently done the Neural Networks course, get some understanding about the tech behind AI, and the Computer Science Fundamentals course was fantastic for me and a no-code creator. It's a low-pressure, interactive way to be a student again, which is what I love about it, and you can do it on your own time. On a phone, tablet, computer, definitely give Brilliant a try. For now, you guys can get a free full 30 days trial and 20% off the annual premium subscription by visiting brilliant.org forward slash better creating or click the link in the description. So thanks Brilliant for sponsoring this bit. Okay, let's now discuss the exciting bit. There is now clear evidence that AI is likely going to transform Siri in 2024 with iOS 18. Will this be the game changer for more mass adoption of AI in daily life? Apple tend to have that effect. We've all complained and joked about the averageness of Apple's AI Assistant Siri. I think it fell behind Alexa and Google Assistant years ago and I gave up with it. And now those LLM models like ChatGPT have completely transformed our expectations. So what's interesting here is the Financial Times recently indicated that Siri would this year be powered by a ChatGPT style generative AI model. And 9to5Mac found evidence in iOS 17.4 beta that Apple was working on a new version of Siri powered by generative AI technology. Here's what I think we might dare to hope for from the new Siri. Number one, the potential integration with other apps to actually take action for you. Yep, we would all love that, right? As opposed to, here's what I found on the web. A great article on 9to5Mac shares that the original team behind Siri actually wanted to meaningfully interface Siri with other apps. Prior to Apple's acquisition, the third party version of the app actually integrates with 42 different services. It was Apple who stripped out that capability, likely to just let Siri be able to do fewer things more reliably. And that's something that Apple are really good at, right? They make sure they turn up and do it well. Number two, I think we can expect more ability to recognize a user's intent. One of the most remarkable things I found about the chat GPT voice conversations, its ability to reason and recognize my intent 
intent as I use it. If Siri can do this better, combined with app integration, we could reasonably expect it to take on more complex tasks like organizing travel for a trip, as was rather carefully demoed in the Rabbit R1 video recently. And number three, could we be seeing an AI personal assistant that can step beyond ChatGPT to real action? Now, at the start of April in around 2024, it was revealed in an Apple research paper that the company had been developing Ferret UI, a generative AI system specifically designed to make sense of your app screens. It was pretty hazy on the info, probably intentionally, but a multimodal large language model like this could mean we are very close to something truly interactive. So is it coming? Perhaps we are moments away from a true iPhone assistant to hand work over to. Until then, give that free ChatGPT voice app a go and let me know what you make of it. I, for one, am eagerly awaiting the likely unveiling at WWDC 2024 Apple event. But let's be honest here, AI assistants are going to still be useless to you if you don't have control of your goals and projects. So watch this video next for the systems tech and tools that can help you do more with less effort and escape the overwhelm. It would be great if you subscribed, awesome if you left a like below, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Goodbye.